<clears throat> Hello, everybody. My name is Markiplier, and welcome back to Five Nights at Freddy's. <clears throat> uh, sorry. <laughs> Couldn't resist. Yes, we're back. Back for the thrilling conclusion of Ruin, the free DLC add-on to the latest game in the Five Nights at Freddy's series, Security Breach. Now, for those of you who missed the last episode, I returned to the Pizzaplex playing as a girl named Cassie looking for her friend Gregory, who we played as in the main game. I took a tumble into the bowels of the rundown Pizzaplex, said hi to a few animatronics, was given a vanny mask that hacked me into the security system, met the security system, reconciled my differences with the endoskeletons, jumped down one's throat, and just kind of wandered around for a while. Yeah, uh, pretty much all my attempts at progress in the first half kept getting throttled by everything around me constantly breaking down. Vents, gondolas, elevators, everything. And after all that was said and done, having just escaped the pursuit of Chica, I found myself, uh, here. Where is here? I don't know. What is here? I also don't know. But what I do know is this video is sponsored by Witchspring R. Ha <laughs> ha! Gotcha! Witchspring R is a brand new story-driven RPG about this tiny little witch girl with white hair and bunny ears named Pieberry. The game mixes together like simulation gameplay, collecting, crafting, and of course, strategic turn-based battles all wrapped up with some really nice graphics backed by just as cool of an art style. I'm getting some real old school RPG vibes from how this game looks, I really dig it. As Pieberry, you battle monsters, solve puzzles, and do other RPG things to level up and get stronger, all to win the sweetest prize of all, pie. Yeah, d seriously, pie. The more you play, the more cool stuff you'll be able to unlock. You know how video games work, right? You're smart. You'll find ingredients and recipes to brew potions that upgrade your weapons, stats, and magical abilities. You'll get stronger and gain new abilities through both training and battling for real. And you can even collect a bunch of cute pets to help you out in battle, or if you just need to get around easier. There are 15 of them and they are the best thing. The game officially launched on Steam a few days ago on September 25th. So if you're an RPG fan looking for a new game, or you just think this looks cool, Witch Spring R is available right now, and you can check it out on Steam by clicking the top link in my description. Again, that is the brand new RPG, Witch Spring R, available right now, and if you check out the game using my link, it's a big help for the channel. So thank you, Witch Spring R, for sponsoring, thank you for supporting our sponsors, and now, uh, uh, let's get back to FNAF. So yeah, when we last left off, I had just entered the zone. According to Helpy, the tutorial gremlin that was implanted in my brain by the Vanny Mask, this is the Upper East server room. This appears to just be a room full of the servers and electrical systems for various parts of the Pizzaplex. It's also uh, the coolest place I've seen in any FNAF game. So because I'm in VR mode wearing the Vanny Mask, my assumption is that nothing I'm seeing here is real, but Dude, look at how cool this is. They had digital waterfalls and floating eighth notes. Did, why can't the whole game be like this? This is cool. I like this. I mean, in real life, this is probably, I don't know, like an employee break room with chairs and a chairs. Again, I'm not really sure if something's supposed to be following me around in here or not. At the moment, I'm alone. I mean, yeah, that security system glitch rabbit thing does show up about five times larger than normal, but uh, they ain't doing anything, so. I, I guess I'll just leave. Eh, that didn't last long, but I'm glad we took that quick detour through the digital park, I guess. This horror game's really got me shaking in my boots with all this pleasant scenery. But I was in for a rude awakening as I re-entered the real world only to find myself in the back rooms. No, literally, it's like the most stereotypical looking back rooms area I've ever seen. I'm running around, turning corners, and just imagining the clickbait. But eventually, I push through a set of double doors, and miraculously, I'm in Roxy Raceway. That's where I was supposed to be going, I think. And look, there's Roxy herself. She is Cassie's favorite character after all, so I'm sure this is gonna be a really wholesome interaction that I forgot her face was missing, okay. So obviously, Roxy nearly attacks. But the voice of Gregory chiming in from the other room distracts her and she runs off. So now it's all about delving deeper into Roxy Raceway to find wherever Gregory's supposed to be. And while this segment is kind of the same gameplay loop that we're used to, just ramped up with a couple extra challenges, there's actually some really interesting lore details in AR mode, uh, very subtly added to the background. <laughs> we see Cassie hanging out with Roxy, having a good time, but a little further down, we see Cassie crying, being comforted by Gregory. Gregory. But after deactivating another security node, the scenery changes. Gregory's gone, Cassie's crying on her own, and missing person posters of Gregory are now lining the walls. Boy, I sure do love things with obvious lore implications, but absolutely no context or answers, okay. So at the end of the last episode, I was talking a bit about how this DLC wasn't really offering up much in the way of a challenge. Ruin definitely got rid of
rid of a lot of the frustratingly broken parts in Security Breach, but that left the game feeling kinda easy. Well, clearly the game heard me because this Roxy Raceway segment actually gave me a bit of trouble. That glitch bunny kept popping in, some of the security puzzles are getting more involved, especially when you gotta do them under pressure, and despite this being Roxy Raceway, a chica showed back up out of nowhere and actually managed to get me a couple of times. <laughs> First jump scare of the video, we got one, we got one. Uh, working my way through the raceway area eventually leads me to another backrooms type place with yet another very, very long ladder. Oh, hello there. All right, that took forever, what now? <laughs> I love this game, man. So I play a little bit of leapfrog here with Monty, getting him off my tail with a controlled shock. Okay, uh, maybe, maybe not so controlled. And finally, finally, after running around aimlessly for ages, I'm actually in Roxy Raceway dealing with Roxy herself. So if you don't recall what happened with Roxy in the main game, a Gregory drove a car into her face and then stole her eyeballs. Yeah, uh, remember, Gregory was not supposed to be the villain or anything. He was just the guy we were playing as and rooting for. And those are the things he did. And Roxy, I mean, Roxy just works here, man. She was just doing her job. So if you're wondering why Roxy no longer has a face or eyes, it, that, similar to one of her segments in the main game, this part involves me luring Roxy to break down doors to clear my path forward, all while avoiding Roxy herself and... Okay, looks like I just got my comeuppance. Yeah, a random Roxy race car just appeared out of nowhere and drove right into me. And I, uh, I, I really just didn't do a dang thing to avoid it either, did I? <laughs> Seriously, I'm looking back at my gameplay footage and I just stood there like, oh my, an automobile. Whatever could that be doing? <laughs> okay, focus, take two. Man, I'm getting good at this. Give me back my eyes! Ah! Let go! Let go! I'm sorry. Error. Yeah, uh, huh. That was... That was interesting. Did, did Roxy just let me go? And apologize? Huh. Why am I more freaked out to not be in danger? Well, yeah, anyway, I'm in Roxy Raceway and no one's trying to kill me. Can I find Gregory now? No. Ugh, seriously, come on. No, go to Bonnie Bowl. Bonnie Bowl? D what? What? D what? D what? D what? <laughs> That's right, despite my only goal in the entire game so far being to get to Roxy Raceway, I now have to leave and deactivate more security nodes off in Bonnie Bowl. Cassie even calls Gregory and is like, dude, I'm 10. Shouldn't I be like calling the police or something? And Gregory's just like, no, shut up, stick to the plan. You know, I'm starting to think that whatever Gregory's being threatened by, I don't know, he might deserve it. Because now we're entering a very special part of Security Breach Ruin, which I call the worst part. Here in Bonnie Bowl, we see the return of Matt Pat's favorite music man. Music man. Yes, yes, music man. God, calm down. In the main Security Breach campaign, you only really ever dealt with two types of music man animatronic. Tiny vent creature music man and giant vent creature music man. But this time, the creatures have escaped into the real world. Meaning, now I have to stealth around dozens of tiny creepy crawling music man spider things to get more security nodes. You get it. And if I were to call anything in Ruin broken, it's probably these things. You're supposed to lure them away from you by using the camera stations, but that only kinda works. I mean, sometimes they'll all go, sometimes only half of them will go, sometimes they don't do anything, sometimes they just come up out of nowhere, and sometimes this happens. I don't like this part. I'm going to skip it now. Oh, first, look at this. This camera station in Bonnie Bowl has like a secret extra feed. I had to zoom all the way out to find it, and it's just this random door that's nowhere to be found anywhere near me. Isn't that weird? Anyway, after finally getting done with the Music Man nonsense, I unlock a path behind this curtain and find... Oh. Oh, wait, is this Glamrock Bonnie's dressing room? Oh, jeez. Monty took his place in the band and then the dude got shoved behind the bowling alley? Oh, poor guy. <laughs> oh, and then he died. If you didn't see the last episode, yeah, 
he died. His corpse is actually hidden somewhere here in Bonnie Bowl. Can you find it? Uh, the mission to unlock it is glitched and doesn't work, so good luck. But yeah, here in Bonnie's room, I slap on the AR Vanny mask, phase through this poster, and... <laughs> What happened? I feel like I feel like I forced another Doctor Who reference into a FNAF video again. But like, the game didn't really give me a choice. Ugh, God, I don't know. Hey, look, lore. Yeah, that Doctor Who opening sequence spat me right out into Vanny's little hideout room above the laser tag arena. This was also one of the spots in the main game where you'd play one of those Princess Quest arcade mini games to unlock one of the alternate endings. Ah, uh, you know, the one where instead of Freddy and Vanny getting ripped to shreds by staff bots, by beating all the Princess Quest mini games, you shut down the staff bots, release Vanny from whatever kind of control she was under, and that allows Gregory, Vanessa, and Freddy's a disembodied head to all escape the pizza plex safe and sound. That one. I remember this one always being described as basically the good ending, but most of us still assumed the Afton ending was the canon one. Since, you know, that one feels the most like an actual ending. Big boss fight, fancy cutscene, blah, 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 but we were wrong! Because here in Vanny's hideout room, we find that same Princess Quest arcade cabinet. And if you toss on the AR mask, you see this. The Princess Quest sword plunged right into the toppled cabinet. Plus, if you look around the room, you can find a bunch of other Easter eggs, like that evil glitchy bunny creature from the minigames on the walls. Uh, pretty much this whole room is a giant blaring sign screaming, No! You got it wrong! This was the actual ending! Idiot! And to be honest, I did realize this while I was editing the last video, but the script was already finalized and had a line where I said the Afton ending was canon, so as to not spoil anything outright, I just tossed some text on the screen that said, foreshadowing. You know, implying that what I was saying might turn out to be wrong later. But apparently, no one saw that because like half the comment section was just, um, actually the princess quest ending is the Canada. I know that! But we hadn't got there yet. That's why the word foreshadowing shows up. Do not act as though I am not all knowing! But yeah, uh, Anyway, this is actually really interesting. If the Princess Quest ending is canon, then that means Gregory, Vanessa, and Freddy's head all managed to escape the Pizza Plex safely. And that would explain why the Vanny mask was discarded and given to me, even though it had a color palette change somehow. But that also raises a lot more red flags around why Gregory is stuck back in the Pizza Plex. Uh-huh, yeah, you see that? That's what that word means. Sorry, <laughs> back to the game. I push forward into Phaser Blast a bit, wind my way through the maze, and find, oh my god, oh my god, it's Freddy, Papa. This is the first time in the entire Ruin DLC that we've seen Glamrock Freddy at all. He looks, well, a uh, new lore alert, uh, the bottom of his foot has the word prototype printed on it. That's pretty deliberate, not sure what that's about, but, oh, oh wait, didn't Freddy make it out of the Pizza Plex in the Princess Quest ending? No, 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 he did, but only his head. Papa? So that explains why we haven't seen Freddy all game. He's... this. Oh, what's that? Sorry, I couldn't hear you. I'm running away in fear currently. Yep, the headless stomach mouth monster Freddy, which is now his official name, check the wiki, chases me through Phaser Blast, and to make things worse, there's a signal jammer nearby making me unable to use my mask. But once I find it, shut it off, and hide in AR mode, Freddy... uh, disappears. Huh. Well, this has implications. So in the Pizza Plex security grid, Freddy is just completely non-existent. Dude's off the grid entirely, which I, I, I guess makes sense. At the start of the main security breach game, he malfunctions and reboots in safe mode. And he was the only animatronic in the whole place who wasn't trying to kill Gregory. So him being off the security grid kind of makes sense. And it's great news for me because now he can't see Cassie at all. Dude's like, I'm gonna get you. Where'd she go? You are dead meat when I get my- Where'd she go? No one is safe when headless stomach mouth monster Freddy is- Where'd she go? That was a Snapcube reference. 
Go, go watch Snapcube sometime. Once I strategically escape the pursuit of headless stomach mouth monster Freddy, I enter a safe zone and get another call from Gregory. But this one is off. Gregory tells me there's only one more security node to deactivate, and it's Roxy, Cassie's favorite character who spared us earlier. That's a bummer. But what's more concerning is Gregory's voice. It's like glitching or something. It almost sounds like this call's being stitched together from a bunch of various voice lines. Almost like it's an AI trying to mimic Gregory. Weird. But for now, all I know is I have to find and deactivate Roxy. And coincidentally, uh, Roxy is right around the corner stuck underneath a fallen forklift. I, I, I don't know how that happened. Just like before, Roxy recognizes us, and I, I think it might just be best to let this scene play out. I remember your special day. Do you still like carrot cake? It has been some time since I saw you last. If I remember correctly, it is on the 11th. I remember because you are number one. Twice. Have you booked your party? I'm sure your friends will show up this time. Cassie? What are you doing? I'm so sorry. I love carrot cake. Happy birthday, Cassie. Fox. I'm sorry. I mean, God, man, what am I supposed to say to that? FNAF is supposed to scare me and be easy to make fun of. It's not supposed to make me cry, come on. I ran this character over with a car and then gouged out her eyes in the main game. Now I'm supposed to feel emotions for them? Ah! This scene legit hit me like a ton of bricks or a forklift. So with Roxy deactivated, the last security node's been shut down and I can finally go find Gregory. I take this staircase down to the same elevator that me and Freddy used in the main game to dive deep down into the depths. Also known as that secret area under the pizza plex where we found the FNAF 6 pizzeria and burnt trap in a boss fight that totally wasn't borderline impossible because I forgot about a mechanic the game barely made me use beforehand but was now integral to the fight. Yeah, I forgot to use Chica's voice box, sue me. Anyway, yeah, that's where I'm headed. And once there, we find this place, whoa. Actually looking a lot nicer than I remember, wow. I definitely don't remember these waterfalls and all these glowing green mushrooms everywhere. This looks like something out of King's Quest. This is beautiful. But of course, it's then right back into a bunch of grody hallways as we... What? D a candy cadet? Papa? Okay, uh, for anyone who hasn't played FNAF 6 Pizzeria Simulator, I mean, same. Let me rephrase. Uh, so for anyone who didn't watch Markiplier play Pizzeria Simulator, Candy Cadet is a weird little robot that dispenses candy and tells you weird, creepy, cryptic stories. Not only is this the only time they've shown up outside FNAF 6, I think, don't check the wiki, but this is definitely the first time we've seen them fully rendered in 3D with like animations and all that. This was genuinely way more exciting to me than I care to admit. Yeah, if you collect tokens throughout the game, you can activate him and he tells you a story about a monster who learns to mimic the song a mother sings to their child when they're scared and uses that song to do nothing in particular. Pretty ominous, but I'm sure it has absolutely nothing to do with anything I'm currently involved in. So let's just keep pushing forward, shut down the security system completely, say bye bye to the glitch bunny thing, and finally find, oh, dang it. This is the mimic. I, I think. I don't know if it's been 100% confirmed or whatever. Yeah, Scott could come out tomorrow and say this was actually me and it would be pretty par for the course for FNAF. But for all intents and purposes, this is the Mimic. Some of you may have never heard of them before. I know I hadn't. But that's because they're a big villain from the FNAF book series Tales from the Pizzaplex. Which means there's a whole bunch of story and lore behind this character, but all you really need to know is they're a big creepy robot that learned to mimic Gregory's voice to lure Cassie to the Pizzaplex and get her to shut down all the security keeping them trapped there so they could escape back out to the world. And now they're gonna kill me. Hooray! But then... Cassie! Get out of here! Run! What? Roxy? I thought I killed you! How did you get reactivated? Yeah, uh, despite me jabbing the faz wrench down her eye sockets, causing a heart-wrenching death scene, a Roxy swoops in and starts beating the mimic up to save me. I, uh, I, I guess I kind of forgot that these guys are robots. If you turn them off, you can just turn them back on. Oh well, look! Danger! I get a call on my walkie-talkie from Gregory, the real one this time, who says he's not even in the Pizzaplex. These are really good walkie-talkies. And he guides me through the caves to find my way to a nearby elevator. Once safe inside, he's like, Okay, phew. Oh, glad you're safe, Cassie. 
but you also set free one of our greatest secrets, so we're gonna kill you anyway. Bye-bye! Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, Gregory, the child, starts talking like he knows way more than we ever thought, and says that because I set the Mimic free, they can't risk them following me back to the outside world. So they somehow send the elevator crashing down to God knows where, the screen goes black, and that's the end of the game. What? Yeah, that's FNAF for you. Forgoing any kind of understandable and satisfying ending in favor of setting up more and more lore we won't fully understand until two games from now, if that. I'm honestly getting a little tired of FNAF focusing so much on setting up lore for the next game instead of focusing on the game that's actually happening right now. But that's how Ruin ends. We see the Mimic for the first time ever, Roxy's emotional death scene turns out to be basically pointless, and Gregory sends his friend to death, leaving us to wonder what the heck he's been up to since the main game. He talks like he's part of a secret government agency or something now. D weird. But of course, like the main game, we have a couple of alternate endings to check out as well. The first is, a. Uh kind of nothing. Uh, during the Mimic chase, if you hang a left instead of a right just before the end, you'll find this cardboard cutout of Fredbear. Pop on the Vanny mask, and... I'm okay. I found a spot to hide. <laughs> yeah, all right. That... That, that was an ending, I guess. Cool. The other ending is a lot more involved. Remember that random secret camera feed that I found during the Music Man segment? Yeah, me neither. But apparently those are the key to this ending. A few choice camera stations throughout the game have these secret feeds you can access. Each one shows a different door in the same hallway. Holding the camera there for a few seconds opens those doors, giving you access to a whole new area during the chase sequence. And uh, for some reason changes the mimic to have them wear this weird mascot costume. Yeah, I get that costumes are part of their lore, but still random. So during the mimic chase, I can now access this hallway that leads to a room with a big red button. The Mimic follows behind me, I press button, a creepy robot arm yoinks the Mimic back, and... Well, we don't actually see what happens, but I'm gonna assume the Mimic got scooped. You know how in Sister Location they had a giant robot that removed animatronic endoskeletons scoop out the human skeleton of a human man? Yeah, I think that's kind of what happened here. Except it was a robot, so it's not as cool. Yeah, we don't really know what happened to the Mimic after that, we just kind of see the gross mascot costume on the floor, roll credits, and I'm not satisfied. Yeah, Ruin's kind of weird. In general, I really love what they did with this game. When it comes to the gameplay and design, this was a much better experience than the main Security Breach game. Definitely makes me excited for whatever FNAF has coming next. But from a story perspective, the game didn't really do what I was hoping. It didn't shine a light on whatever the story was meant to be in the main game, and the story it did have seemed more concerned with setting up stories for future games than giving Security Breach a complete and satisfying story of its own. So as much as Ruin is a great improvement over the last game, I can't help but still be a little disappointed. But I mean, it did still have Candy Cadets, so I don't know, that's a 10 out of 10 for me.